Big shout out to them for letting me capture early Madden 23 footage for you guys. Quick disclaimer, everything you are about to view is a work in progress. Madden season is finally upon us. If you're just getting Madden 23, you're the top five reg teams that you should be using right now. A few honorable mentions real quick. We got the Arizona Cardinals. We have JJ Watt with Swim Club and Run Stopper. Buda Baker with Unfakeable and Midzone KO. Secure Protector and Matador for Big Rodney Hudson. And lastly, Gunslinger and Dashing Deadeye for Kyler. No escape this year. And why the Cardinals are an honorable mention and not in the top five. Due to, you know, their lack of defense alongside Kyler not having escape anymore. They did go in and do in depth research for QB releases. Kyler now does not have generic three. He now instead has slinger seven, which isn't the best, but these receivers are insane. They got DeAndre Hopkins, Marquise Hollywood Brown at 97 speed, Andy Isabella and Rondell Moore at 95 and 94 speed. That's actually insane. Tight end isn't the fastest and the O-line isn't the best. Rodney Hudson will hold things down up the middle. JJ Watt is the anchor of this defense without Chandler Jones. And Isaiah Simmons 100% is the lurk at 93 speed, 6 foot 4 height. But besides those players on defense, this defense is not the greatest. No abilities besides Buda Baker and not the fastest corners at all. But if you use those players on offense and defense, you could definitely get some wins with this team. Coming in at number 5. Kind of crazy, but it's the Kansas City Chiefs. They only have three abilities on their team. Mahomes now having pass lead elite, which is really awesome for Mahomes. And they did touch his release a little bit to make it a little better. If you guys want a video of all the new QB releases in Madden 23, I will be making a video on that very soon. So stay patient. But with pass lead elite, dashing dead eye, Mahomes is going to make some insane throws. And I've already seen it. Travis Kelsey with Leapfrog and Tight End Apprentice, and Chris Jones with Under Pressure and El Toro. The Chiefs did lose Tyreek Hill, which is going to hurt them in the game and in real life, but they are still a top five team in Madden 23. They got a lot of depth at running back. You could go with McKinnon, Ronald Jones, or of course, uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Their, their receiving core has insane depth. You got Juju, McCole Hardman, 97 speed, Josh Gordon with a nice six foot three frame, and MVS, who they did touch his speed down a little bit. He was 95 speed last year. He's looking like he's going to be 93 speed this year. The Chiefs O line has always been kind of suspect, but you know, with 82 overall and 84 on the left side of the field, you should be all right. Frank Clark, Chris Jones, Willie, Juan Thornhill, and Justin Reed are going to be your primary defenders. They also did lose Tyron Matthew. But, I mean, he was a little slow. But, I mean, having that acrobat definitely is going to help. If you were curious on what Mahomes is looking like now, I mean, he has plenty of receiving options. I don't think their offense will be that much of an issue. More or less their defense. Let's see right here. Mahomes could still make some pretty crazy throws. See right here. I was just throwing that across my body. Finally, you could get very creative with this tight end apprentice and create some nasty routes. See this post. Travis Kelsey, easy touchdown. Coming in at number four, I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, you know, on paper, their abilities, they have so many abilities. How could they be number four? It's honestly because of Brady's release. Brady having hard master, conductor, fearless, and set feet lead is amazing, especially at the age that he's at. And you know what's crazy is Brady retired. Uh, you know, we're thankful to have him back this year. You know, the Buccaneers probably would not even be a top 10 team without Brady. But, you know, he's back. So the Buccaneers are back in Madden 23. Got Levante David with lurker, deflator, mid zone. Mike Evans with deep out elite, mid and elite, and red zone threat. If you played any types of Madden 23 beta, you know the big receivers go crazy on the high balls. Tristan Wirfs with secure protector and natural talent. Ryan Jensen, I I'm so sad that he got injured, but secure protector and all day. Vita Vea, El Toro and Bogo. Shaq Barrett with strip specialist and edge threat. This guy is going to go crazy for you if you use the Bucks. Godwin with Slotto and mid in. I use this team so much in the beta, but you know, Brady's release is the only reason why this team is at number four. I've used this team so often in the beta and I love them. You got Big Lenny, 91 speed. Fortunately, you're not going to have Gronk anymore, which is definitely going to hurt. Neither him or OJ Howard is on the team anymore, but... You know, you can use any of these three 80 speed tight ends, maybe even Braid if you'd like. That definitely knocks the team down a little bit. Their O line is really good with Jensen, Shaq, Mason, and Wirfs, but this is where they go crazy. They get the best sheds ever, I swear. They added Akeem Hicks, who's at 88 overall. He's not the best pass rusher, but he'll play the run amazing. Vita Vea goes so crazy at DT. Shaq Beard off the edge, getting those amazing animations. And Levante David and Devin White, one of the best linebacker duos in Madden. If you've played Madden regs the past couple years, you know the Bucks really didn't have the best speed or the best secondary. That has kind of changed. You know, Carlton Davis isn't the fastest, but he's 83 overall. Got 93 speed and 92 speed corners in Bunting and Dean. Zion McCollum, 6'2 rookie, who is a beast at 90 speed. And you got Rashad Robinson, who 
who could also play anywhere on the field. I know they don't have the best zone, but they, they are pretty fast for regs. Winfield will be making plays with that 89 speed, and so will this Chris Cooper. Thankfully, you have a couple options at receiver. I don't have them in the game for some reason, but Mike Evans, Scotty Miller, Brashad Perriman, and Chris Godwin are nasty receiving threats for this Buccaneers team. See right here, I mean, you just have plenty of options. Like I said, the tight end may be an issue for this team, but if you run spread sets like this, you won't need to put a tight end in the game. So they are the only team with Heart Master in the game, but I mean, I don't even like them that much for their offense. It's more of their defense. I mean, they got goons everywhere, and Shaq Barrett is gonna make your life so much easier. Coming in at number three for me is gonna be the Los Angeles Chargers. I know a lot of people had this team as number one or maybe number two behind the Packers, but man, uh, just wait until I show you guys something in a second. This team has insane abilities, it has insane players. I mean, you see Khalil Mack, edge threat, Keenan Allen with outside apprentice. I wish this was slot apprentice. This team would be definitely number two for me if it had slot apprentice. Joey Bosa with another edge threat. I mean, two edge threats on one team is insane. And obviously you got Derwin with flat zone, Lumberjack unfakeable, JC Jackson with acrobat, and a new ability we haven't even heard of, outside shade. Austin Eckler, backfield master. I mean, this team has it all. Another outside apprentice, deep out elite. And finally, Herbert with his respective, his respectful pass lead elite, sideline dead eye, and high point dead eye. I mean, the high point dead eye is honestly sounds amazing. You know, re after reading that, they might be knocked up to number two for me. But for now, number three. Herbert being an 80 overall is definitely going to hurt. He might get some under pressure and accurates. But like I said, you know, he is six foot six. He has the abilities you need. And high point dead eye is going to be really glitchy if it works. Austin Eckler with a backfield mismatch and the routes. Awesome. Austin Eckler with a backfield master is awesome. And they got tall players everywhere. Guyan, definitely put him on the field with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. You know, they're not the fastest, but they do make up for it in height. And honestly, I forgot about this guy. He's six foot eight. I mean, the Chargers are insane. I highly recommend you guys use them and try them out. Their O-line, not the best. I mean, they do have 88 overall Corey Lindsley, but about that's about it, you know. Their D-line, Sebastian Joseph Day, new addition, Tillery, Covington, but this is where it gets awesome. It's Bosa. I mean, Kenneth Murray is super fast as well. And Khalil Mack coming off the edge. They also did pick up Kyle Van Noy if you need extra depth, running something like 245 or double A gap. Cornerbacks go crazy. Honestly, I might made I might have made a mistake putting them at number three. They definitely should be either number two or one. But I mean for now they're number three. Bryce Callahan, Mike Davis. Sante Samuel, and obviously J.C. Jackson. That's plenty of depth at secondary with J.T. Woods, Nasir Adderley, and obviously Derwin James. So the reason I had him at number three is the QB release. I mean, I think they did touch Herbert's release and make it, I mean, slightly better. It does look crisp and clean, but for me, you'll see in a second, the releases of everything in this game. I mean, the sheds, the pass rush, it really means a lot to me. It is pretty good but it's not the best. The creative combos you could do with this team is kind of insane. Like I did just say, I wish Keenan Allen had Slot Apprentice. That would make this team number two, maybe even number one. The ideal scheme for this team is, you know, running the ball with Austin Eckler, running some type of like deuce close or under center or two, one, two tight end set. I mean, that's what I could see being really good with the Chargers. You just run the ball, play very passive, and then you go down defense and you just shed, shed, shed. You've seen Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa's. Line them up on uh, opposite sides and let them go to work. Coming in at number two for me is going to be the Buffalo Bills. You got Diggs with Jukebox, Deep and Elite, Grab and Go, Tredavious White with Acrobat, Pick Artist, Deep Out Zone KO, Von Miller with edge threat, that's all you need to know. Josh Allen, fast break, pass lead elite, and dashing dead eye. No escape this year, unlike last year. And then you got Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer who are gonna go crazy with the medium route KOs. I do wish they had acros. If these two guys had acros, this team would be even that much more better. See right here, Diggs is at 97 overall. I mean, White, 93, Von Miller, 93. Josh Allen, who I do think should be at least a 90, is at an 88. But we're not complaining. So at running back, you don't have the best options. You know, Singletary's all right. He's a little slow. I probably would use Taiwan Jones or this Wade dude. Maybe even Duke Johnson. The receivers are kind of cracked out. So you got Diggs, obviously. You got Gabriel Davis, who balled out in that championship game. Six foot two. He's not the fastest, but he is going to be able to make some nice plays for you. You got Isaiah McKenzie and Tavon Austin. They definitely touched down Tavon's speed, but I mean, it makes sense. He's getting older and later in his career. But I do remember when he was just sitting at like 95, 96 speed. You definitely got some options at wide receiver. You got two beasts at tight end, AJ Howard and Dawson Knox. If you want to run a little 2-1-2, two two, this team isn't that bad 
also. O-line is all right. You got 80 overalls, 80 overalls, you know, 72 and 65, but you know, we'll take that. This whole left side of the O-line is pretty good, if you ask me. You got Shaq Lawson, Vaughn Miller, who's gonna be generating a lot of your pressure. Ed Oliver, 81 overall. But besides that, you know, their D-line isn't the best. Um, you know, their linebackers are all right. You know, you got Edmonds and Dodson, but besides that, you know, not too many really good defenders on this defense besides Trey White, you know, Vaughn Miller, and then obviously Micah and Jordan Poyer. But you see right here, they're not the fastest either on defense. The Chargers definitely beat them by a mile, but I will show you here in a second why they're number two. Finally, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, respective, and really good safeties. Now, this is the reason I have them at number two. EA did a nice overhaul with QB releases this past offseason, and just look at that release. This release is one of the best releases we have seen in Madden history. Um, just wait for my QB release video. I'll be breaking it down more in depth. But uh, yeah, they they made a, excuse the blind read. I'm kind of still in awe. They made this dude, Josh Allen, have Aaron Rodgers Super Saiyan mode. See right here, we are taking off. I, that wasn't the best representation, but I mean, I'm getting shedded. That's why I based a lot of my teams this year is off like QB releases and just the ability to get the ball out when you need to get the ball out. See right here, um, you know, it was an overthrow, but I'm just going to rewind this release one time for you guys and let it do its justice. See right here, any type of deep throw, I've noticed this with Josh Allen. Oh my goodness, that's Aaron Rodgers, except we're going deep. So, I mean, yeah, just wait till the QB release video. I'll break it down even, in, I'll break it down even more. But for the time being, this is why the Bills are at number two. That deep ball release is going to do wonders for you versus the pressure this year. Coming in at number one, not many teams left. You obviously see it on the screen. We got the Green Bay Packers. You got Aaron Rodgers, Gunslinger, Roaming Deadeye, and Passy to Lead. The only QB in the, the game that has both Passy to Lead and Gunslinger. And if you didn't, if you couldn't tell by now, Passy to Lead is better than Gunslinger. Uh, if you have both, it's insane. But, you know, if you were to have one, you'd rather have pass lead elite. Trust me on that, guys. Jair Alexander with acro, short route KO, deep out zone KO. So, you know, this guy's going to be your lock versus their, you know, the guy, the, the team you're playing's best receiver. You're going to put him on them. You're going to put him on them, and he's going to match up very well. Bakhtari with all day and edge protector definitely needed in a game like this where the D-line sheds are insane. And Kenny Clark, unpredictable and inside stuff. This guy goes crazy, trust me. It's crazy to me. I did the same exact video last year, and I actually had the package starting off at number five. And, you know, by the end of the year, they, they were the best team. No one else used another team in regs, maybe the Cardinals. But, you know, eventually escape got banned. See right here, I mean, this team is full of beasts. Aaron Rodgers definitely, uh, it's up to him or Josh Allen, the best QB in the game. I'll let you guys decide when you guys touch the game. Aaron Jones with A.J. Dillon as an air trucker. The receiving depth, you know, it could need, use a little work. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not liking what I see. I completely forgot that Rico Gafford, who had 95 speed, is not in the game anymore. Obviously, losing MVS hurts a lot, but trust me, their defense makes up for it tenfold. Yeah, so it's looking like you're going to use Sammy Watkins, probably Lazard, and they do have this rookie, Christian Watson, who's 6'4". If you like the tall receivers, this is your guy. Robert Tanyan definitely helps the receiving depth a lot. He is a pretty fast tight end, who's really good. O-line is pretty solid, in my opinion. You got two 80-plus overalls. Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary. I also forgot this team lost to Darius Smith. So maybe, you know, maybe they're not the best overall, but their secondary is really good. So you got Rashawn Gary, Kenny Clark. Those, those are going to be your staples on defense. Campbell's pretty good as well, but they have them at a lower overall. Preston Smith as well, probably your third rusher. And this is why this team is insane. So you got Jair Alexander, 93 speed, Eric Stokes, 95 speed. And how was I supposed to know that Rico Gafford is now a cornerback? Insane man-to-man -man coverage with this team is going to go crazy. Uh, forgive me, guys, if I, you know, like you got 92 speed, 96 speed. I'm overwhelmed right now. 93 speed and 95 speed all in your secondary. Not to mention Rasul Douglas. You know, he's not the fastest, but he has really good zone. And, you know, you got Amos, you got Savage, you got Vernon Scott. Like those are all really good depth guys. But yeah, 100% would like to have Rico Gafford at receiver rather than cornerback. But I mean, I don't know what's going on in Green Bay. They got him playing cornerback now. Trust me, this is not like an edited player. This is not CFM. This is regular rosters. Once you boot up the game, you will see Rico Gafford at corner. And I got to go and practice one and look what he's looking like. So running something like 146 is going to go crazy with this team. 
let me sub in all the goons where they need to go if you're a guy who likes running dime dollar those type of sets and absolutely likes screaming at people this is your team look at that rico gafford Nixon, I mean, bro, Rico Gafford just secured himself a sack at 96 feet. Yeah, their defense, offense took a little hit, but Packers by far the best team in the game. They're so well balanced. If you guys did enjoy this video, hit that like button. Subscribe for more Madden 23 early footage. And I'll catch you guys in the next game plays. I got plenty in store for you guys, teaching you guys a game. This is your number one source of content. Trying to get better. If you're trying to get informed about the game, I got you. Stay patient with me. Appreciate you guys watching until the end of this video. I know it turned out to be a little longer than expected. But hey, we're getting back into the swing of things.